Hey there everyone, this is Lucky7DX, welcome back to Let's Play Okami Den. In the last episode, we rescued Denami, we're all back together again, and we're gonna actually wrap up the very end of the 5 Star Brigade. We're pretty much at the finish. It's literally just this room, and then we're actually at a save point, as uh, you might have saw on the, uh, as you'll see, uh, you probably saw on the map in the first three seconds when I showed the map down there, just to sort of orient you guys a little bit. That's why I usually show the map at the beginning of the episodes. Anyway, um, so th these faces, they, um, remember the faces from last episode when we only had Chibi? Basically, you saw, you know, the sad face, the angry face, and the happy face. The happy face is missing, so we draw the happy face in here. If you've, uh, shown the symbols off, the happy face is actually the, the... If that was a happy face! That face was freaking happy. Don't you tell me that I did not draw a proper happy face there. I am a master at drawing happy faces. See, look at that. That is a happy face. Screw you, game. I did it right the first time. So, that's not even the face I drew. It's not even close. But once you have the happy face, the statue will be happy, except it won't be because it's actually going to attack us um, very slowly. Oh, yeah, we just got destroyed by a statue. The end, game over. Well, no, actually all this means is it's just going to make us have a required battle. So, one last um, fight before we get to the boss. I guess we can call this the warm-up before the boss. Uh, just another fire eye and ice lifts. Once again, we can use the ice lifts to easily take down. Is it an ice mouth or an ice lifts? I forget actually which one it is, but well, you can use the ice to take down the, the fire eye really quickly. Um, now, this is, gives us a chance to actually show off a new weapon. This is the first fight we actually um, have had to do with our new weapon, the glaive, uh, Sumara, whatever. Sugumara, whatever the hell. Um, so now you, um, you can actually get an idea of how much damage, like, I, I guess I'll show some of the uh, light bars on the bottom there for this fight, just so I can show just how much damage that one initial hit does from a fully charged up. This is why the glaives are my favorite, because the damage they do, I mean, maybe they're a little worse at fighting the normal enemies, uh, like the frogs, because they're a little slower, but the, the, the amount of damage this sword does in combat like this, it just, tr I mean, it's it's so powerful and so very effective at getting, I mean, it's, it's combo followed by a partner attack is just very effective, because you see, it doesn't even knock them away, it only takes three hits to activate a partner attack. And it, I mean, that, that one combo, which these ice lips have always been, you know, pain throughout these, this whole five-star Brigada, right? That one combo did, like, half the ice lips health, just like that. You know, just three hits, and, you know, a hit on uh, the, the Nanami follow-up of the, 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 the uh, thing. So we almost pretty much two-shot this thing. In fact, this one hit right here, he's dead. So, glaives in combat are really, really powerful. And I just like the way they feel in the kind of, this kind of combat. Like, the way Reflectors feel, they feel a little bit more awkward. The other weapon feels extremely awkward, actually, in this game to me. Um, so, while it might not be good in combat outside the battles, inside battles, glaives are freaking godly, and I love them. So, my personal opinion, obviously, you guys might like, might, like, like the other weapons better. My personal opinion is, though, this one's definitely my favorite. So, that's just, that's just me. Um... Anyway, so let's we'll quickly save. I'm not going to check out the merchant, because he pretty much has the stuff that we saw in the first episode of the Five Star Pagoda. So two episodes ago, there was a merchant there, and he sells the same stuff as that one. It might even be the same guy, for all we know. Same demon, so he's not worth checking out. I'm not going to bother wasting time. We won't have to edit in the whole zoom out, zoom in thing to show the bottom screen. So basically, I'm being a lazy ju a lazy douche. I meant to say a lazy douche. I meant to say a lazy jerk and a lazy dude at the same time, it came out as a lazy Jew. Now I'm a freaking, like, religionist. Oops. Total accidental. It's like it's like when you say, like, um, it, it's like one of those times where you just mix up words and it comes out really freaking awkward. Speaking of really freaking awkward, it's the catfish dude. I love this guy. He's such a crazy... We're fighting a giant fish with markings on his face who thinks he's a dragon. Like, that's just kind of awkward and funny at the same time. This is actually not the... He, this is actually kind of tough, though. Um, in that, the, you'll see, you'll see what he is. Um, it's a very interesting boss. I do, I do like him a lot, though. I think he's really fun to fight. So, even though he's a bit, um, he can be a bit tricky, he's a bit annoying. Anyway, he's like, I am a carp! And they're like, you're definitely a catfish, dude. Dude, it's not good to lie to you. It's, it's not good to lie to yourself, dude. You're a catfish, but that doesn't make you ugly. You're still a beautiful person. You should accept who you are and be at peace with yourself. You shouldn't lie. You don't have to put on this mask, this act. You don't need to be a dragon for people to love you, dude. You just need to be yourself. Okay, I'm done with the wishy-washy wishy crap. Basically, you're a giant dick, and I'm gonna kill you. Got it, catfish? Good. Also, you're a catfish, you're ugly. There we go. Um, got that all of my systems. And also, you ate Cooney. And you know, Cooney was kind of a, a douche of how cowardly he is, and how he ran away from us during the Master and Nera fight. And we were kind of ticked at him, but you know what? He was a good kid, and you ate him. So you know what? You're gonna die. There we go. We're all hyped for the boss fight. Let's go and do it. Actually, he's even more of a prick than you think, though, because it turns out he's stolen Anami's wet jewel and dry jewel. So those treasures you were looking for, 
This this prick stole them. What a dick. Now we're now you have to die even more. So uh, this episode, guys, it's gonna be all about beating up a giant fish. That's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, so Nanami clearly pissed off um, at the guy. So we're gonna have a very interesting fight. I do kind of like his lines though. In everything, we must give up something. Dot dot dot. Long text. Come on, text. There we go. And it's time for you to give up your life. You know, it's such a typical like you know boss thing. It's time for you to give up your life. But um, it's still pretty funny. Also, I really like that voice he just did there. Being really introspective right now. Introspective, whatever. Um, so basically, what you have to do for this fight, um, they're basically they're, the way you heard him. Basically, you're going to have to be using our vine skill. We're not going to really use water spell in this fight, unfortunately. But we're going to be using a lot of the vine um, and just Nami in general. So what he does is he's going to launch at you. His tongue actually is a hook, though. So connect the, the, his uh, tongue to the. Whenever he opens his mouth, connect his, uh, his tongue to the blossom, and you'll, he'll, you'll string him up, and then you can basically do damage to him. So you'll be able to slash him a few times. Um, if you're using your glaive, make sure you charge up the full as you're you know, using the vine because then you can actually, you'll can actually you be able to do the full, you know, the super damage combo on him. So make sure you charge up your glaive, string him up there, and just slash him. The problem is, as you can see, um, when, once you, after you hit him a few times, like, just do a full combo on him, then watch out because after you, after you do the full combo of Nanami, he's going to sort of flounder off and try to fall on you. And if he falls on you, you'll actually take damage. So make sure you sort of um, get to the sides after you do your full combo because he'll actually try to hurt you after that. Um, so make sure you do that. Other things he does, he'll um, for now he's going to swim around the side. He's going to have more t um, varied attacks as the fight goes on. But uh, when he swims in the side, you can actually slash at him, but you can't do damage to him. Um, if you slash at him, he might drop some ink pots, though. So if you're running low on ink for some reason, uh, just slash at him, and he'll eventually drop more ink pots. Or you can refill on these white toads here. But um, once you get him down to a third health, uh, as you saw, it was actually a bit less than a third, um, around a quarter health, he's going to move on to a new island. Um, what you're going to need to do um, is basically... Bring, um, have Nanami swim over to the other island, uh, and then once she's over there, you know, find your way over there. In the meantime, he's going to try to dive bomb Nanami. Every time he jumps up in the air, just give him a power slash to knock him back down in the water. And if um, you need more ink, just kill the white toads to get the uh, more ink. But once Nanami's over there, vine your way across, and the, you know, the fight will continue. The second, basically, now we're um, done to phase one, and we're back to the second phase of the fight. So, uh, Master Bullet, he, he'll still swim around, he'll also uh, lunge at you, but he'll also lunge at you from a... Uh, um, other directions. So if he launches at you from this side, um, now if he does a lunge at you like that, um, where he just goes out and then pulls back in, um, if his mouth if his, his mouth is open, you can actually hook him. As I think um, we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, not right now, actually. He's like uh, kind of in the, no. Okay, okay, I can get the tongue. That's good. Um, sometimes if you're uh, if you're in the way, you might actually accidentally connect yourself to the flower instead of his tongue, and that's unfortunate. Um, it's always really hard to dodge when you want to up the combo because his flattering is like trying to body slam you. It's actually kind of hard to dodge, and it's what makes this fight a little tricky to get um, a, per a perfect score on, because it's that damage is actually pretty tough to dodge. And if he lunges from the left, his mouth will be open, and you can actually hook him and actually do um, the full combo that way. If he lunges from the right, um, or if he lunges from the either side horizontally, because you can do that, he also lunges you horizontally from the side, um, you can actually, um, like that, like this right here actually, you can actually slash at him to, to do actual damage to him. So um, if, he, if he, his mouth is open, string him up, do the full combo, uh, keep, otherwise, keep your glaive charged. If he charges you from the side um, or from diagonally to the, from the right, you can uh, basically just do your, your your really powerful slash and do you know a bit a small chunk of damage to him anyway. And that small those small chunks of damage they do add up a bit. So um, eventually, um, you can wear him down both from uh, stringing him up like that and from just slashing him as he tries to you know ram you. And eventually, you'll get him low enough where he'll move. I think this will actually be where we get to him to the next phase. Or do I actually hit him enough here? Uh, yeah, okay, that, that actually, that, that little blow right there actually was enough to trigger the next phase. So once he's, once he's down to about a third of his health, as you can see, um, you'll basically have to go to a new island. This time, there's going to be little wooden uh, barriers, basically, that you're going to have to uh, direct Nanami around. So draw the path correctly around him. Not really that tough. All, do, all it means is that, you know, it means Nanami has to move around longer, which means you're going to have to power slash him a few extra times um, to keep him from body slamming Nanami. So just keep slashing him when he's in the air. Uh, refill your ink as the white toads appear in the meantime. And then, um, whoa, got a little close there. Just gonna slash you in the, across the, th the your fins there. And eventually Nanami will be able to make it across, and then you can move on to the final island. Uh, it doesn't matter if he's in the air right now, as long as Nanami makes it... Oh, I guess she's not fully on there yet. Uh, as long as she makes it full all the way across, um, he won't be able to damage her. So even so, if you make the vine right now, as you can see, uh, he's going to land, but he won't actually do damage to her. So uh, we're safe. Get her back on your back, and then we can uh, proceed to the final phase of the fight, which is pretty much the same as always. Uh, although he's going to have a few extra attacks up his sleeve, so, or, well, by a few I mean one. He really has, he's going to have one final different um, kind of attack, 
a bit of an odd attack, although we saw at the beginning, um, before the fight started, he, he actually showed that he can do this. Um, by the way, you can tell to, you, know, you need to stick out of the way when your attacks st um, stop doing damage, which you'll be able to know because Nanami's combo, her water thing, um, that's, it makes it pretty obvious, you know, when he's blocking your attacks. So, um, once you see that happening, just get out of there and start dodging. Anyways, you saw his, um, final attack, uh, he sends a little electric beam at you, um, and, uh, or not electric beam, a little electric ball at you. Just dodge it, um, you, there's no way you can reflect, you can't, like, power slash reflect it, unfortunately. But, um, you can, you can, uh, just dodge it, and it's really not that hard, hard of an attack to dodge. I mean, he gives you plenty of time to realize it's coming. And uh, once you do that, it's 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 pretty easy. I mean, as you can see, it takes a while to charge up. And it's just a really small ball. Just jump out of the way, or even use your dodge technique to get out of the way. You know, you press A to dodge, um, and it's pretty simple. So, um, oh, he doesn't have his mouth isn't open. So just um, once again, like reflectors, glaives can attack behind you if you're doing an aerial attack. So why not? He lunges at you, sort of just jump out of the way, and then as he's passing by you, just um, release your glaive, and it'll actually hit um, behind you as well. So you'll be able to slash him like you just saw. I was still able to slash him right there. I actually got a hit on them there as well. So just dodge, do uh, you know, hold in the Y button, power up your glaive, dodge, and then turn around and slash him. Just like that. Uh, and then you'll actually build him. Th that damage is going to rack up. The a fully powered glaive, it does do quite a bit of damage. So like I said, this is why I like the glaives a lot. Um, so, oh, nah, I didn't get a hit on him, uh, him there that time. Oh well. Really, he's low enough where one full combo should finish him off pretty well. Um, I, I haven't taken that much damage during this fight, although I'm not sure if it's going to be good enough to get the perfect score. I might be a little shy of a perfect score, which would be unfortunate. But, um, and while it is actually a lot of money, you know, it's a lot of difference in money, I'm probably going to lose like 900 yen if I don't get a perfect score. It's only 900 yen. Um, I'll be able to make up for it. I'm, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm already out at like halfway or so to what I want. Um, well, it's not maybe less than halfway, but um, we're, we're getting pretty close to the point I want to get anyway in terms of money. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think I have to worry about um, Don't worry too much if you don't get perfects. Uh, the little bit of money you lose, you can always make up for later on. Anyway, he's obviously dead. Um, we finished him off there. The only thing, I, I don't like how, you know, they don't have this whole dying option. You just hit, you finish the life bar and they just sort of go away. I'm like, oh, that's kind of boring. But anyway, Kuni's alive. He's covered with fish saliva, which is disgusting. Look, look at that. That looks freaking disgusting. Kuni, you need a freaking bath. There's water all around you. Go take a bath, son. Just go dive in the water and clean yourself up. You smell like fish. But anyway, uh, Kuni, apparently he survived, he gets out of the weakened uh, bullhead's mouth, and <laughs> bullhead, that guy's a load of bull! Ha ha ha, funny joke. I just ruined a cult of this moment completely and totally. But anyway, Kuni actually um, get, recovers the wet and dry jewel from the, ca um, the catfish's belly, so Nanami's gotten her treasures back, her, her goal has been accomplished. And she's all happy now. However, Master Bullhead seems to still be alive, and while he has the jewels, he's still a pretty potent force. However, Kuni's outside of his body now, and he's pissed. So Nanami's actually going to demonstrate the power of her dry jewel, and uh, she's going to dry up all the water. And, well, basically, he's now a fish out of water, which is rather unfortunate. Um, kind of easy to kill a fish when he's, dr when he's, well, he's not drowning, you know? Fish don't drown when they're out of water, but he's, you know, he's dying. So it's time for Kuni and Chibi to finish this guy off together. The, the, the original team is back. The epic team is back. It's time to go kick some ass. Actually, I, I do love this, you know. Kuni gets basically kidnapped by this fish. He gets out, and then, like, you and you would, basically Chibi and Kuni are just like, alright, let's go teach this guy a lesson badass style. And by badass style, I mean you do the slash thing that we've always done. You're not a rock, but, well, apparently we're just going to do the slash thing anyway. So, you're going to get several lines where, you know, Kuni dashes across, dash in the, um, draw your line in the same direction that he slashed. So, he went from the upper left to the lower right, so draw your line from the upper left to the lower right. And you'll basically, you know, augment his slashes. And we're going to finish this fish off with glorious style, and, you know, he'll be dead. So, there we go. One last, or, well, we have this blow, and then uh, one last blow after this. Just so epic. Ready, ready? He jumps up and does epic spinning slash. And this is it. Straight down the face. Spinning slash. Hey, hey, hey. Spin attack to the face. And he's dead. But spin attack to the face. Because everyone should die from spin attack to the, spin attack to the face. That's just how the world should work, apparently. But there we go. He's down and out. We have become victorious. The fish slowly, slowly dies. Man, he's like all vertical right now. We slashed him like perfectly vertical. Epic epicness is epic? I don't know. But he's dead. We win. We get our epic little howl to signify that we have overcome a great trial. 
because that's why I, I love the howls in Okami Dan. They're just so cool. And Okami in general, you know, they get the epic, like you know, the epic howl, little victory howl, and I just think it's really, it's a, it's a really nice touch. I like it. Anyway, let's see our score. Yeah, as I thought, a little low on the damage, so uh, didn't get the full bonus. A little unfortunate, but 2100, an extra 20, um, you know, it's just a 900 yen yen loss. You'd get 3000 for getting the full bonus, so in the end, not a big deal. Anyway, so he's definitely done for good. Uh, the three of us have worked together to take down yet another one of the, of the Master Demons, and everything seems to be going really well. You know, we've all been successful. Now we can all go home and celebrate and continue on with our journey. Chibi and Kuni have been reunited again. Wait, wait, what's going on? You're not dead yet? No, you, no, we slash, we spin attack you to the face. You're dead. Go back to sleep. Stay down, boy. Um, so, but yeah, he is dying, though. You know, we have finished him off. But with his last act of vengeance, he's going to doom us all, as he just said on the screen right there. Copycat. Uh, he's going to use his whiskers. See, I told you you're a catfish. Um, so basically, he's going to, uh, drain the forest somehow. I'm not really sure how this works. Like, he hits a little electric thing, and all of a sudden, all the water starts rushing out of a god of forest. As you can see, the forest is being unflooded. So we've solved the flood, but unfortunately, what's the cost? Because we're trapped in this massive flood. This seems like a great tragedy, actually. Wait, Madame Fawn said there's going to be a, a, a great tragedy about to befall us, and, and oh, what is going to go on here? We're in trouble. We can't, well, the mermaid's actually fine, because she, she can swim. She's like, oh, this is just like a playground. But um, Cooney and Chibi, in obvious trouble as they're being swept out by the raging tides, and that's a giant log, and it's headed straight for us. This, this doesn't look pretty. Um, uh, guys, you're in trouble. And unfortunately, this is precisely why I said, you know, make sure you got everything before God of Forest, because we're literally getting swept out of a God of Forest by the tides. Cooney gets hit by a log. Cooney, we'll save you. We'll save you, buddy. This is just, this, um, uh, I, I, I can't even, like, keep a straight face while doing this, because th this emotion, or, um, this part of the game is just, I mean, it's a little confusing, I guess, because, you know, you guys are riding a log, shouldn't you be fine? I mean, you're riding a log, but, um, here's what happens. Wait, you, you sound like you're saying goodbye. And unfortunately, guys, that's right. Kuni has decided to sacrifice himself, saves Chibi by knocking him off the log, refusing to let Chibi sacrifice himself. And Kuni gets swept out to sea. Unfortunately, guys, we've lost Kuni. We're drowning. Things just seem to be going really poorly for everyone. And, well, I'm going to have to leave the episode here, guys. I'm going to leave my cliffhanger. What's going to happen to Chibi? Will he drown? What's going to happen to Kuni? Will he survive as well? This fish, this freaking fish, is giving us so many problems. Unfortunately, this is where, like, the first part of the game ends. And this, the story is about to take a bit of a turn. You'll see what happens next time. Although, um, also, once again, you know, this thing. What is this thing? Why is he absorbing the souls of the monsters we defeat? What's going to happen to us? Well, these answers are going to be solved next time. This is Lucky70X signing out. Stay tuned for more Okami Den.